It's Recon Demon with another Starfield video. Today we're going over New Game Plus. What you get, the benefits, how long it takes, and whether or not you should be doing it. This video will contain some spoilers about late game content, the Starboard, and the main quest. If you aren't ready to reveal that information yet, then I would save this video for another time. We'll be going over how you get to New Game Plus, what it is, and we're going to talk about the things you get, like the Starborn Guardian, which is the Starborn ship, and the Starborn armor, and all of the other little perks and advantages along the way. And at the very end of this video, we'll talk about is it worth it, and should you be doing it, and if so, how many times should you do it. The game has been out for a while now, so most of you already know what the Starborn are, how to get to New Game Plus, and all of that jazz. So if that's the case, you can skip further along in this video to some of the content that you might actually be hearing but for those of you who don't know or you want to hear it again here's how you get to new game plus it's pretty simple you follow the main storyline you'll collect all the artifacts and eventually you'll come across these beings called starborn who travel to alternate universes and do this to get stronger you yourself will become one and when you're faced with the unity you are given a choice to stay in your universe or traverse to another one and do it all over again when you travel to a new universe that's where new game plus starts Everything resets, except you bring through your stats, your research progress, and a starboard ship and starborn armor, which we'll talk about later. And you can do this as many times as you want, because according to the main story, that is now your purpose in life. Travel to alternate universes, battle other starboard, compete to become stronger. And every time you do this, things that you have starboard related, like the ships and armors, will get stronger each gameplay. So that brings us to our next topic, the starborn guardian, or the starboard ship. The first thing you're going to see when you cross over is the Starborn ship. It will get a little bit stronger and a little bit better every new game plus, but overall the ship is not that impressive. It does give you an advantage over not having a ship in the early stages of the game. It quickly gets you to where you need to go, and for the purpose of the story, you kind of need a ship to go back to Atlantis and kind of introduce yourself because you don't have that tutorial intro story from the original gameplay. But like I said, it's not that impressive of a ship. You can make a much better ship pretty early on with very little funds. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the different variants of the ship, but I will briefly describe each one and how many new game pluses you have to get to get to the highest tier of Starborn ship. There are six variants of the Starborn Guardian in total. Each time you go through new game plus, you will upgrade to the next variant. The first time you go through will just be the standard Starborn Guardian with a hole strength of 649, shield 530. Uh, your weapons are a solar flare beam of 24 damage and a gravity torpedo of 70 damage, which that torpedo does stall enemy ships, um, eventually shutting down their engines. Then you will go on when you uh, do a new game plus two, you'll get the Starborn Guardian 2. And each time you go through, the stats will get a little bit stronger, but if we take a look at the Guardian 6, the whole strength is 1254, shields are 1235, solar flare beam is 42, and the gravity torpedo is 150. Impressive stats for a very early game, but as far as late game comes, you can make a much better ship that does way more, way better. The, um... Cargo space of the Guardian is really not that impressive either. It doesn't you can't modify the Guardian, you can't make it stronger, you can't add a bit of warp drive, you can't do anything to it. It it's just all around not that impressive in my opinion. It just looks cool. As far as functionality goes, I like to customize my own ship, build my own ship, or maybe even buy a better ship that a vendor offers that can do more, hold more. Um, I like to build a craft on my ship. You don't get crafty bitches in the Star Wars Guardian can't put them on there, nothing like that. Um, when I play Starfield, the ship is my home. I want beds, crafting stations, I want research stations. I want to be able to walk around and see things other than some very bland looking interior that has kind of a sci-fi feel to it, but there's nothing inside of it. But next we are going to talk about something that I think is pretty cool, and that's Starborn Armor. There are more variations of the Starborn armor, and you have to go through a lot more new game pluses to get to the best armor. So let's dive into that. The second thing you'll probably notice when you come through new game plus is your armor. You'll pull up your inventory, you'll realize you have nothing there except for the Starborn armor. 
When you come through on a new game plus, you get your ship and your armor, and that's it until you go back to Constellation and kind of start the universe all over again. Every time you come to do a new game plus, your armor will change, much like the ships, where you go from you know, the standard Guardian up to Guardian 6, you get the same with your armor. You have 10 different variations starting from New Game Plus to New Game Plus 10. However, it maxes out at New Game Plus 10. So if you want the best Starborn armor, you have to play it all the way through, start a New Game Plus, do that nine more times, and then you get the last and final Starborn armor. The appearances are locked to what New Game Plus you're on. However, the stats will vary. When I say stats, the perks, because the physical resistance, energy, and EM those are all locked to what New Game Plus you're on as well, and the specific armor type. But the uh, perks are randomized. So once you get to New Game Plus 10 and you get the last armor, you might have to re-roll, save right before you go to the Unity, and keep doing it until you get the perks that you want. It's kind of annoying, but that's the way it has to be done. Now I will say from experience, I'm on New Game Plus 14. It is tedious going through to do 10 New Game Pluses. Um, I would highly recommend, if that is your goal, to just do the main story. When you go through doing New Game Plus, you can skip the main story on that second time. Um, I will have another video about how to quickly get through all the New Game Pluses, get to New Game Plus 10, and do that. But it is tedious. You have to want what you get at the New Game Plus. And for me, that was the armor. I wanted the armor. The ship I didn't care about, but the armor was worth it for me. There are other advantages to doing a new game plus 10, uh, like powers, which I'm going to talk about powers next, but first I want to kind of go into the specifics of the new game plus 10 Fireborn armor, which is called the Venator. I think that's how you pronounce it. Venator? Venator? Pretty sure it's Venator. But let's, let's get into the details of that. Some people argue that the Venator armor doesn't look that impressive for a new game plus 10 but i like it even though i do have a mod that changes the appearance of it on my normal playthrough for the purpose of this video i didn't i took the mod off um, however for the stats uh, ignore the physical resistance i have a perk that increases that quite a bit but for the standard stats that you're going to get on this armor would be 246 physical resistance 246 energy and 246 em those are pretty impressive stats uh, in my opinion i think it was I think New Game Plus was designed to be for a very hard playthrough on, you know, the very hard difficulty setting. Um, I think that was the original intent of it, because if you try to do that without doing New Game with all the New Game armor, it's going to be very difficult, you're going to burn through med packs, but with the New Game Plus 10 armor, it makes it a lot easier to do very hard. I wouldn't say easy, because it's still going to be difficult, but it gives you that edge, and I think that's one of the reasons why the New Game feature is here. Uh, along with the fact that it kind of just fits into the story a bit. You can actually see the armor mod I was talking about here, and um, I'll actually post a uh, link to that mod in the descriptions for those of you who want it. But let's talk about powers. Powers are something that are introduced into the gameplay pretty early on when you do the main quest, um, the found at the temples. Now each time you come through and do a new game plus, you have the opportunity to go visit all the temples again and regain those powers. You already have those powers when you come through the unity uh, they carry with you, but what's going to happen is now you have a chance to find it again and increase its level. The max of that is 10, just like the armor, you get to a level 10 power. This is another very tedious aspect of the playthrough because you have to do every single temple, every single new game plus, and a lot of people don't want to do that. Uh, there are cheats and methods to get around that, which I can talk about in my how to get the new game plus 10 quickly video. But the powers are a huge benefit to new game plus, even just going through a couple of times, they get pretty powerful. At level 10, they are very overpowered. Uh, you would almost have to increase the difficulty of the game, otherwise you're killing people way too quickly with the powers. The Solar Flare, it does a huge amount of damage right up front and then some damage over time. My my three favorite are Solar Flare, Void Form, and Phase Time. Uh, the combination of those three and, you know, having some legendary weapons, you're pretty overpowered. I had to go to a very hard difficulty just to make the game more playable because it got too easy. Uh, but I got to play it on a very hard difficulty and it was still a bit of a challenge, so that was fun. If you're not a big powers user, I would suggest that you try them out because they're a lot of fun. But if it's not for you, maybe New Game Plus isn't for you. Um, maybe you don't want to have level 10 powers. 
or maybe you don't want the armor, or maybe you don't want the ship. Uh, if that's the case, then I wouldn't recommend New Game Plus. But that's going to bring us to the next topic, and the final topic, is New Game Plus worth it? So we reviewed how to get to New Game Plus, uh, the things that you get, like the ships, the armor, uh, increased powers, and the advantages of doing a New Game Plus run. Now, is it worth it? That's, that's a big question. Uh, that kind of boils down to how much time do you want to spend? Do you want to grind out nine different iterations to get the best armor, the best ship, and the, the most advanced powers that you can have in the universe? Or do you want to just do it one more time? Get that, uh, you know, initial Starborn armor, that uh, initial Starborn Guardian ship, and have level two powers. Just to play it again, do it a little bit different, uh, make some different decisions. You can do it just once. Um, it kind of depends how much time do you want to spend on the game, and how much grinding do you want to do. There are ways that you can quickly grind out nine playthroughs and get to New Game Plus 10. Uh, if you do it uh, the vanilla style, it takes you roughly 30 minutes to uh, from start to finish to another New Game Plus. Still, doing nine of those, that's a lot. Um, a lot of people won't want to do that. So to answer the question, to boil it down, is it worth it? It kind of comes down to how do you want to play the game? Do you want the most advanced stuff and do you want to play it nine times before you get a chance to do a full playthrough, all the side quests, and really deep dive into the game before the expansion comes out? If that's not something you're interested in, then I think the answer is pretty simple. It's not worth it. Uh, there's not enough advantages to uh, the average player to do all of that work. Um, you can get everything you want out of the initial playthrough. You can do all the side quests. And then you can set the game aside, wait for the Starfield expansion to come out, and do it all over again. Well, that's the video. If you liked it, or if you found it helpful, please hit like and subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more Starfield videos, as well as many other videos on many different games. Uh, so stick around, and I'll see you next time.